Ladies and gentlemen, we're here. I'm part of the click, isn't everybody? <laughs> yes! 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 I, I got an idea, yeah. Beat up John Cena! Give me a hell yeah! Hey, oh, a little bit of the bubbly. Too sweet! The following episode is scheduled for one fall, and it is for your listening pleasure. This is In The Click. What's up, everybody? Baby Kiwi here, and joining me once again is my good brother from the Bullet Cast. It's Philip. How's it going, man? Huey, it's Wednesday night. I know, dude. Yes, I am the main delight. If you don't know, now you know. <laughs> Absolutely, man. How, how you doing, bud? You doing good? You doing I'm, all right? I am doing awesome. Like you said, yeah, here we are on a Wednesday night, which is kind of rare that you and I are doing an actual AEW Dynamite review the same night right after the show ended. I mean, it's kind of exciting. I know normally you and I would get together on a Saturday night. And in a way, it feels like I just saw you or just talked to you a, a few days ago. But here we are right back at it. But that's kind of the bonus. So in case anyone doesn't know, I'm on vacation from my main job this week and next week and so my schedule during the week um it's still been pretty busy with last minute christmas related stuff and running errands for my dad and my brother uh but as far as like going to bed early for work the next day or whatnot i, I can stay up later in the night i can work on things and so when i hit you up i was like hey are you available on wednesday and and you know, you and I were like, yeah, let's, let's do it tonight <laughs> right after the show. So it's pretty awesome that you and I are able to watch a show of AEW Dynamite live in real time and then record right after for our immediate reactions and recap and reviewing the whole show. So it's pretty cool, man. I don't know if your schedule allows it. Maybe this is something to consider in the new year of trying to do this on, on a regular night after the same night as the show happens. Well, with the uh, with the shoot job, I really only work Saturday and Sunday, so Monday through Friday, I'm a, I'm a free boy. Oh, okay, good to yeah, know. But, uh, are we uh, are we still gonna have a Zoom call Saturday night? Because it's just it won't be the same. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the other thing too. So keep in mind. So, like I said, I'm on vacation, but here we are. We're still in the pandemic here in California, specifically where you and I are located in Northern California, in the Bay Area. We're under this uh, uh, second lockdown, if you want to call it that, call it that, or, or stay-at-home order. And so, pretty much for me, even though I'm on vacation, it's pretty much just a staycation. So I'm just at home. I'm not going anywhere. Uh, like I said, I'm running errands during the day, like essential stuff, like going to the grocery store and whatnot. But other than that, I'm back at home. So I'm like, okay, I want to be productive. I was watching a little bit of Ozark, catching up on that on Netflix. And there's some other shows I need to finish. But I'm like, okay, I'm home. I got nothing else to do. Might as well watch wrestling in real time as the show happens and then try to record a review right after. So I'm kind of digging this, man. It's a Wednesday night. So like I said, all the stuff that's happened on Dynamite is fresh in my head. So like you said, maybe in the new year, we can kind of, that can kind of be more, more of our new schedule or routine. So midweek, uh, a hump day, meeting up on a hump day. Absolutely, man. I mean, in, in the new year, you know, Richard and I have to have a battle to see who leaves the show. And hey, man, I, I think I got it. I think yeah. we just saw E40 and Too Short have a little have a little cipher battle. I, I think that's what Richard and I can do. I've been, you... I've, been, I've been working on. I haven't seen it yet. I haven't seen. Okay, 40 me neither. Yeah, no, I haven't watched it. it. But I've been, I've been working on some stuff. I've been working really? on some stuff. Okay. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? You ready? Okay. <clears throat> uh oh. Yo, yo. Real eyes, real eyes, real eyes, but yet and still I rise. Maya Angelou vibes. Bars. Wow. I'm done. I'm done. Thank I'm you. Done. You retire you, now. I mean, I mean, I mean, do you get it? Like real eyes? Like, you know, yeah. you see and you realize yeah. in your mind the real eyes that people tell you, but yet and still I rise. Maya Angelou vibes. You see, bro? Dude. I'm, I'm out here. I'm you out should, here. You should be a, a manager for the acclaim now. 
<laughs> Let me do it, bro. <laughs> they were uh, spinning some, uh, uh, some some game tonight. They were spitting some bars, you know. I'm sitting here <laughs> drinking Mountain Dew. I was going to say, what are you drinking right now? I'm sitting here drinking Mountain Dew, but yet and still the only time these people should hear me is on pay-per-view. Ooh, my See, job. Oh, I'm my God. out here. <laughs> Bro, I am out here. <laughs> oh, my God. That's so awesome. But, uh, 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 no, thank you again for all the clicksters for tuning in right now. Please remember to subscribe. Uh, if you have an, if an iPhone or Apple user, subscribe to us on Apple Podcasts. Uh, if you have an Android or something else, you can listen on Spotify, Google Podcasts, we're on all the other major podcast platforms. And if we're missing one, like it's kind of interesting, like not to get on a, another tangent here, but you know, I always say Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, those are like the big three that I can think of people use. It's kind of amazing. I don't meet a lot of people who listen to podcasts on any some of the other platforms. We're on a lot a good portion of the other podcast platforms, but I feel like either Apple Podcasts or Spotify are like the top two places to be. So I would love to meet someone that listens to us on something else, like Castbox or something. I know a guy. He was my uh, mass comms professor at Chabot, Tom Lothian. Shout out, Tom. Yeah. <laughs> this fool would listen to podcast on Pocket Cast. I'm like, what is that? <laughs> Why are you doing that? You have an iPhone. The app's already installed. When yeah. You get, like, what are you doing? Yeah, I would love to meet someone that listens to podcasts on a non like major popular podcast platform. Like, I would love to meet someone. The the one thing I will say, like Stitcher, where they their heads up over everybody. If you've kept the same like host mm-hmm. like throughout the entirety of your podcast, all your episodes are there. Because like if you do like um like I've I've scrolled back on the bullet cast for because uh, since we've been on anchor or whatever mm-hmm. and like you'll you'll get back to like earlier this year like 2018 or even other podcasts like it'll only go back so far uh-huh. like let's say you've been doing a podcast for five years mm-hmm. consecutively every episode is on on Stitcher that's the thing it, it is so you and I will both use anchor to host our podcast. But it's not on. It's not connected to Stitcher. Um, any idea how it can? No, it's, it, it's there. M- mine is really. You have an Anchor, option for that. Anchor puts it there, bro. What? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, we gotta talk yeah, after the show. Yeah, like, we, we gotta Sorry talk to get all technical show. here. No, but like, uh, like I said, it, it's it's fascinating to me because I was looking at some of the stats and like I think like fifty something percent, if not sixty percent, I forgot what it was of our listeners is through Apple. I like Apple podcast is like the big biggest one. So anyway, I'm just saying I'd love to meet someone that listens to our show on like a separate podcast platform that's not as big as some of the other ones. I would just love to hear how it sounds to them and you know, or 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 why they listen on something else and not not like one of the bigger platforms like Apple Podcasts or Spotify or something. Anyway, I'm just kind of curious. I don't Ab- know why abs- Absolutely, man. You know, but uh when all the madness is over, we're having a meet and greet with the fans, right? Yes, absolutely. We need to totally I, do that with the I, I got the sh- I got the Sharpie ready for autographs, bro. Let's let's do it. Dude, I got my eight, I got my 8 by 10s printed out ready to go. I I I will say this, um I want to be vague because it didn't happen. But before the pandemic, uh, I was approached actually a couple uh, venues here in the Bay Area that was interested or asking if I was interested in maybe doing like a live podcast recording at their spot. Um, hey, yo, we should do that because I know Sam Roberts like did it yeah. at the Carolines. Yep. Uh, like cheap heat with Rosenberg, they did like a live, yep. uh, cheap heat and stuff. Yo, that would be dope. I, I I will say this, and it was uh uh just to keep it more vague. Like I said, it was a comedy club here in the Bay Area that was asking me about that. Um, but you know, I, it, it it there was going to be a lot of planning involved, and we need the station help and promoting and all that. But it was a possibility. There was some interest there. So maybe after the pandemic. When things kind of get back to normal, we can go out again. Maybe that's something to explore and get some fun big name guests or something. So absolutely, man. Because I don't know if I've ever told you this, but that's been one of my goals yeah. to do bullet, bullet cast live. Like I don't have to do it every year. If I can just get one done, have like a really, or just like a really good show and some mm-hmm. big name guests. Like 
I'll be cool, bro. I can retire. And maybe we could do like a <laughs> joint thing, like a, a collab thing or, or, I mean, I know you got the bullet cast, but you're also here on in the click. And so, you, you know, you're part of two podcasts, two wrestling podcasts. I, so I feel like X-Pac, dude, NWO or DX. <laughs> <laughs> so, so when you're corporate branding, you're six Pac, but you right now you're X-Pac. And then Absolutely. some days you're one, two, three kid. Yeah. We'll, and then we'll other go days, retro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then, you know, when I'm on, uh, when, when I'm on team talks, I'm Sean Waltman. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. I'm, I'm one, two, three kid on complex conversations. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. Well, like I said, the only reason I was kind of going off on this whole tangent is if there's a podcast platform that we're not on that you want us to be on, please email us in the click at gmail.com. Please use that email. I check it every day. And, uh, yeah, no, Phil, I got to talk to you about Stitcher because I, I, like I said, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, Stitcher are like the big plat- podcast platforms. But uh, but please, if you listen to us on Apple Podcasts, please uh, take a, a minute or two, leave us a comment, a rating, give us five stars on Apple Podcasts, leave a, a comment, a uh, shout out, and thank you to the, a couple of clicksters who took the time to leave uh, a couple of pretty awesome reviews up on the podcast. I appreciate that. Because think about it. If you're someone out there that's looking for a fun wrestling podcast to subscribe to and listen on a regular basis, those reviews help us. It's almost like one big advertisement. It's like a Yelp review. If someone finds us or stumbles across our podcast and they're trying to figure out if they should subscribe or not, those reviews help us and helps those people motivate them to hit that subscribe button and hopefully become new listeners, new clicksters. So uh, thank you in advance for that. Also, Spotify, is there a rating or a... Or or comments on Spotify as well, or you can have that's how you can help bump up the charts. I think on Spotify, I'm not quite sure. I don't know. I know Spotify has been doing like the year end thing where you see like yeah how many minutes you uploaded and how many downloads and all that other yeah, stuff. Yeah, I'm so, not I'm not sure. You just have to go to like the creator portal or something. Yeah. So I just wanted, like I said, thank you to all the clicksters for all the continue continuous support. Here we are as we kind of wind down 2020, uh, a little forward tease. Uh, so uh, hopefully sometime early next week, we will be releasing a year in review for 2020. A lot to talk about uh, with, with pre-pandemic, post-pandemic. Uh, we'll, we'll have kind of like a fun collab all-star show. Um, it'll be myself, my brother Tommy, Richard, Philip. I, I believe you're going to be available as well. Um, we have uh, one or two other guests. So we're going to have some fun with that. I'm looking forward to it. Like I said, we'll just review the whole year. So much to talk about and break down. So it, it, it should be a lot of fun. I look forward to those type of shows because I think it's uh, it could be some very fun discussions. And also looking ahead to 2021, um, we're going to have some uh, hopefully some fun announcements coming. I know he teased last episode. We're going to get some merch going. I'm still waiting for our first batch because I just want to double check that they all look good. And then, uh, you know, if it looks good on me, it looks good on you, Philip. Then we'll go ahead and just start promoting the hell out of it so um got some merch on the way hopefully i'm in the process of updating our youtube channel so please subscribe to us on youtube i'm uh, getting a bunch of audio up there so please hit that subscribe button i'll be back on a regular basis of updating that every week with some fresh new content as well so a lot of big things coming in 2021 i'm trying to use my staycation time to work and plan out stuff for uh, 2021 so take in the click to to the next level so all right, enough uh, 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 rambling and ranting about all this stuff coming to the click. So here we are. Uh, we're going to talk about AEW Dynamite in a quick second. But before we jump into that, uh, Philip, I know, like I said, with, with you, when you're on the show, we spend a lot of time just focusing and talking about AEW related stuff and sometimes non WWE stuff. I usually spend the WWE stuff with, with Tommy and Richard, but this is something that came out today and I kind of want to get your reaction because you are a big WWE fan as well. I, I'm not going to deny that. So, uh, when this came out and plus this week and we're going to be busy with so much other stuff, I don't have time to talk about it. So I figure we'll use this opportunity to talk about it right now. So the complete. 2020 winners for WWE Slammy Awards were announced. I didn't have a chance to watch it. Um, I guess it's on YouTube and probably on the network. R Truth hosted it, and even Todd Pettengale made a, uh, an appearance as well. So I figured let's run down it. I have the results here, 
And I guess I kind of want to run it by you and see if you can guess off the top of your head the answer or not and see if you can get it correct or not. So um, let's go ahead and jump into this. Uh, if, you know, for anyone don't know Slammys, they were gone for a while, right, Philip? And they just brought it back this year? Yeah, they've been gone for five years. The last time the Slammys were around, Seth was injured, you know, when he tore his ACL mm, and he had to okay. van- relinquish the title. Yeah, he was uh, the superstar of the year that year. That's right. Wow. I grew up with the Slammies. I remember the old Slammies back in the 90s when they were in that like conference room or a ballroom. It looked like at a hotel or something. And yeah. like Owen Hart got the, the one, yeah. the two. And like, yeah. And he's like, whoo. He was hey, to- Owen, like those clips of Owen, they, they kill me, man. They really do. I uh, I won a Fabrizi. I won I won a Fabrizi award. Nice, congratulations! Thank you. You know, but no, but I was freshest, gonna say, like, YouTuber in the game. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> and no, but, but I remember like Owen Hart. That became part of his gimmick. Like he would come to the ring with both Slammy awards. He would have what was it, the tag title, and then he would have both Slammy awards. So he was decked out in gold, coming to the ring all the time. He was like, woo, woo, woo! Like it was just so much hey, fun. He was the original dripped in gold. Exactly, man. So uh, the Slammys, you know, I hold a special place in my heart. It's like they're in the year award show where they, yeah, it's like any other award show. So they acknowledge uh, the best of the best from the company. And it's just so much fun. You know, back in the day, like Sonny had like a, uh, some pretty memorable moments as well. Like it, There's so much stuff. I mean, like the old Slammys mean a lot to me. So uh, let's go run down through the list here. Uh, so I'm just going off uh, what I see on PW Insider. They have the full recap here. Uh, all right, Philip. So um, I'll just go down each uh, each topic here, category, and just tell me who, who you think the winner might be, and then we'll all tell you who it really is. So, all right, who do you think was WWE's male superstar of the year? Drew McIntyre. Yep, it was Drew McIntyre. There you go. Uh, okay, what was the biggest return of the year? Edge. Oh yeah, Edge at the Royal Rumble. Yep, that's what that's what won here. Not too big of a shocker. I mean, come on. A guy who's been gone for almost ten years to make a big return at the Royal Rumble. I mean, we joked about it before. We joked about it off the air the other day how grown men were crying that day seeing that hey, return. I, I, I'm not allowed in a certain Starbucks ever again because of my reaction. <laughs> exactly. Uh which is a surprising category, ring gear of the year. So this website doesn't have who are the nominees, but that's kind of interesting. I mean, for certain WWE superstars, their ring gear is very much part of their character, their gimmick, and really makes them stand out amongst the rest. So who do you think had the best ring gear? Johnny Gargano. I want to say him. Was it him? No, it was actually the New Day, which I was kind of shocked. I was thinking like maybe Bianca Belair. She makes her own gear. Uh, 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 God, who else had some good stuff? Uh, actually, remember Dolph for the longest time was always wearing like a baseball hat to the ring, a SmackDown cap to the ring. So that was always kind of funny to me. Uh, but yeah, New Day won, I guess, because of the bright colors and whatnot. Good for them. Uh, let's see. Ooh, rivalry of the year. Uh, there were some good ones this year, but is there any, which would, who do you think was the biggest rivalry of the year? Um, Randy Drew? No. No. Close. Randy Edge. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Totally. That makes sense just because they had some I mean, I know the WrestleMania match was a little long and kind of slow. Uh but the they had the wrestling was it uh They the had greatest, the greatest wrestling match ever. <laughs> exactly. Ever. Um this one was kind of another one I was like shaking my head. Uh musical performer of the year. What? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> I saw this like, wait. <laughs> What? Who? Who sang? I don't. Who? Who has an instrument? I'll just say that. I'll give you a clue. Oh, Xavier Woods. No. Who plays the guitar? Oh, oh, Elias. Okay. All right. All right. Who do you think was the female superstar of the year? Sasha Banks. Yeah, that was. Yeah, she definitely. I mean, my heart was Oscar. I like I said, I think she was the MVP of the year. But uh, Sasha Banks had an awesome year. I think that rivalry with with Bailey really put her over the top. And even before that, when we were the golden role models, everything they did together. So, yeah, no, she definitely earned that one. Who do you think was the referee of the year? <laughs> Charles Robinson. Yes, it is. For little me, Nate. <laughs> little Nate. For me, I would give it to the guy that's been hanging out with uh, Caleb uh, with Caleb Braxton. 
<laughs> Did you see that one? You see which? Uh, who is that? The dude with the eyebrows? I think I don't. I just remember there was a. I forgot who posted it. Uh, I guess Caleb Braxton uh, put on her Instagram story. She was out with one of the refs, and so I don't know. It uh-huh. was. It, Yes. Uh-oh. So Jimbo, I don't know they, you better watch out now. Uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know. You know, if, if they're just friends hanging out. But anyway, there was, was a couple of social media posts of the two of them out together. So who knows? I don't know. I'm just saying. Anyway, I would. He would be the MVP. The fact that he's hanging out with Caleb Braxton outside of the ring. So good for him, man. <laughs> so uh, celebrity appearance of the year. This one was kind of obvious to me. Gronk. Yeah. I mean, come on. like who else did they really had during the pandemic? I mean, they had remember they had that one. Uh, the girlfriend was at the uh, the Bachelor that was on forever, like for weeks on end. And like, what was uh, the point of her appearance? Uh, to woo Andrade, to, yeah, she, to get the rose or uh, not Andrade on Hill. Uh, yeah, um, but what was the point of her there exactly? So she could get the rose exactly. You know, uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> this one I was like, I kind of uh, like trash talker of the year. Hmm. This is a good one. So, I mean, you got to definitely think it's probably more towards the heel side. Someone that would talk back to you or, you know, talk down to you. The, I'll, I'll give you a clue. This one was actually a tie. So there it was a one female and I'll say one faction. That's all. I'll give you a clue there. Hurt business. Yes. And the Bailey. No. Sasha. No. I don't know. This one doesn't like nasty people. Oh, Lacey Evans. Yeah. It's kind of what has she even done this year? I know exactly. Just other than hang out with Peyton Royce. So, um, in a odd tag team together. All right. Next up was social media superstar of the year. I, I don't even know. Just tell me. Uh, it was Bailey, actually, which I was kind of surprised. What? Yeah, I, I'm not quite sure. Um, all right, let's uh, power through this real quick. Got a couple more. Breakout star of the year. And actually, I'll give you a clue. It was a tag team that won. Um, Street Profits? Yes, I was going to say friend of the show. Give you a clue. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Uh, this one should be pretty easy. Double cross of the year. Who turned on who? That was oh, the Bailey turning on Sasha. Exactly. Uh, moment of the year. Randy Gordon kills a man on live TV. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, they can't have to buy the vote. It should be up there. It was the Undertaker's final farewell at Survivor Series. Um, tag team of the year. Street Profits. Yeah. And match of the year. Oh, the greatest wrestling match ever. See, that probably should have won. It was actually. It's the Boneyard? Boneyard, Undertaker and AJ Styles, WrestleMania 36. So, um, let's see. Oh, oh, there's one more. Um, Superstar of the year. Didn't we just have? Did so there? That, yeah, there was men and or male and female, but now there's just overall superstar. Oh, I've t- who is it? Who is it? Drew McIntyre. Friends. Wow, <laughs> he won both. Yeah, it's kind of shocker. Roman Reigns. Didn't win anything, so kind of I I if I had to guess, kind of going back to what I think you and I have talked about before, he wasn't he, there was what a good six month period he wasn't with WWE. He was at home, so probably wasn't as um, eligible compared to some of the other people being here the whole time. So, Matt, hey, you know what? He he won my vote for wrestler of the year. <laughs> exactly. I don't care. Yeah. So uh, yeah, that, so that's on the Slammies. If you want to watch the whole show, our truth hosted. And everyone had their acceptance speech. So good for them. Um, like I said, I, I, I love the Slammies. Uh, I think it's cool that they kept it separate, maybe from an episode of Raw. Because I think in the past one was on Raw, kind of slowed the show down. So um, I haven't had a chance to watch it. I don't know if I'll have time at some point, but I'll try to check it out. Uh, so, yeah. Anyway, it uh, should be some exciting stuff there. And then, uh, all right, let's move on over. So quickly, some impact-related news. And I just want to touch on this because there is definitely a tie-in with AEW as you know Kenny Omega and Don Callis both appearing on Dynamite and Impact the last couple weeks I just want to touch on that because there is the crossover and stuff was brought up so 
Um, let's see. So a couple things just to touch on real quick. Uh, so this week on Impact Wrestling, it was like a best of show. It was like year in. So they're playing a lot of best of clips and best of moments and matches. So nothing new per se, but they did have a couple AEW stuff, uh, uh, segments in there. Uh, the first one was Tony Schiavone and Tony Khan back in there doing another advertisement. They were promoting tomorrow night's or which was tonight's episode of AEW Dynamite. And Tony Khan was pretty awesome making fun of, uh, of Dynamite. Actually, both of them were, excuse me, both making fun of Impact. Tony Schiavone and Tony Khan. Tony Khan was just throwing shade like, oh yeah, I own properties here in Nashville. Oh, Nashville's pretty cool. And he more or less said, like, you know, if I want it, I could totally buy Impact Wrestling. Or he says, uh, Impact Wrestling's hard to kill, you say, because they're pay-per-view. I could totally buy $7 billion worth of ammunition to take you guys out. And then um, he was talking about the tag team division. And he says, oh, I got to check some of these contracts when they expire. Or I can maybe, uh, you know, buy them or, or sign them. And then he said, I hear Kenny Omega is going to wrestle at your next pay-per-view. If I want it, I could file an injunction and prevent this from happening. But you know what? I'll let you guys see Kenny Omega appear on your uh, pay-per-view. Look, if he's taking anybody from Impact, Jordan Grace, Deanna Perrazzo, Taya Valkyrie, beef up your women's division. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, totally. But I have a feeling Taya probably go to NXT just to be with her husband in WWE. Johnny Mundo, John Morrison. I mean, they're uh, both in Florida. They should be fine. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, and so then uh, the other thing, too, was Tony Khan. Um, he uh, he did say he welcomes anyone from a excuse me from Impact to make an appearance on Dynamite. There's an open invitation. If someone from Impact wants to show up, it's okay. So that got a lot of people talking like, oh, is there going to be a possible like impact wrestling invasion of some sort coming to Dynamite soon? Um, we didn't see that tonight on Dynamite. Just jumping ahead. Spoiler alert. But it makes you wonder maybe in the coming weeks something could happen. I don't know. What are your thoughts about that? Uh, oh, oh, let's see. AEW Revolution. Gallows and Anderson versus uh, the Bucks title for title. Make it interesting. Yep, exactly. Um, which we'll get into also the Kenny Omega stuff. That can maybe play into it as well based on the promo we saw from tonight. So I'll save that for later on the show when we get to that point. So, yeah, it could be kind of exciting. Uh, Kenny Omega also had a promo as well, him and Don Callis, and it pretty much it was like a holiday message. And they pretty much said, uh, we're giving you the greatest Christmas ever. Uh, the number one champion in the world is appearing on Impact Wrestling. Enjoy it. And, uh, you know, so they're just kind of, you know, floating their egos of like just their presence. It's the greatest Christmas gift of, uh, of it all. <laughs> um, He said number one champion in the world. Drew McIntyre wasn't on uh, Impact. I know. I was going to say, come on. Drew's number one. <laughs> so, yeah, like, let's, but, let, let's, let's not. Uh, mess up history, guys. Yeah, so it, like I said, seeing Tony Khan, Tony Khan was pretty awesome. I, I I enjoy kind of his personality here, and he's really kind of playing up the whole like you know he can buy up the company, he can buy up people, and all this stuff. It and the fact that he op- he opened the door for Impact to come over for appearances could be interesting. So uh, we'll get into that more when we talk about Kenny Omega's promo for Dynamite. So, also wasn't this announced on uh, Impact Wrestling that Madison Rain will be leaving the company, take a full time job outside the industry. So she's going to be leaving as a, a color commentator. Her and her husband Josh Matthews, who've been doing commentating for the majority of this year. So, Philip, uh, I know we talked about this briefly off the air, but your thoughts about Madison Rain leaving Impact Wrestling? I mean, she's been there since, like, 2009, yeah. like, really on and off, so, like, a decade with the company. I really enjoyed her work as a single star, as the killer queen and the beautiful mm-hmm. people, knockouts tag champ, multiple-time knockouts champion. Uh, I was like, yeah, she was uh, she was uh, one, one of the reasons why that uh, woman's division thrived, along with, like, Velvet Sky, Gail Kim, and uh, other, other, other talented women over there. So, you know, w- wish her best of luck in all her future endeavors. Yeah. And uh, can't wait to see what she does next. Yeah, I think, uh, as you said, since 2009, I think she's had like three different stints within Impact. I know she's also done stuff with Ring of Honor. And yeah, no, this most recent run was more commentary based with her husband, Josh Matthews. She did a couple matches, but uh, so I'm, I'm happy for her, you know, find a full time job outside the industry. My guess. I didn't say what it was, but who knows? Maybe she's just tired of, you know, maybe on the road. Well, not so much on the road because of the pandemic, but, you know, traveling and whatnot. So 
Uh, I'm sure for her, maybe she just wants a, a change of scenery. Maybe it's a better paying job. Who knows? So as long as she's happy, cool. I mean, Josh Matthews, her husband's still there. So I'm kind of curious who will they have fill in as the new color commentator. I know Matt Stryker also works for Impact Wrestling. Uh, Don Cows, who has done commentary for New Japan. He works with Impact. Maybe he can do some commentary there. Phil, do you have a preference of like maybe who's in-house that can fill in that other spot? I've always, en- I'm telling you this off air. I've always enjoyed Matt Stryker's commentary. You know, he a- just adds a different element to it. Like it's mm-hmm. not over the top. It's calm, cool, and collected. I loved his commentary in SmackDown, ECW, Lucha Underground. Yeah, I would, I would love it for Impact. Yeah, that would be really cool. So, I uh, wish, like you said, Madison Rain all the best. And yeah, she's done a lot of work with Impact with the whole Knockout Division, won the championship uh, many times. And yeah, just really, if you really think about it, like the women's quote revolution or evolution in WWE, like how long was that? Like five years ago now? Yeah. Like, Impact was running it in like 2007. Yeah. Impact, <laughs> Impact Wrestling, you can argue, had the standout women's division in wrestling years before that and really were the ones that set the, the, the bar of what it means to be like a top notch. <laughs> the bar sorry i forgot about that I was like what are you doing so no but had like the top notch women's division that set the bar of the template of what other promotions should be doing as far as having a very competitive athletic entertaining women's division so impact wrestling really could be you can argue were the real trendsetters of that so uh and yeah master ring was a part of that so like i said good luck to her and what she does next and who knows maybe she'll do you know guest appearances here or there if i had to you know make my own guess on it um uh, let's see also it was announced jay christ uh got his release from impact which his contract was going to be up at the end of the year anyway and also there are rumors that ethan page might be leaving the company Nothing official yet, but his contract does expire end of this month. And so there's a lot of people speculating he might be leaving. Apparently, the rumor was like AEW had interest in him. So I'm kind of curious where he might go if he does leave. But if he does leave, it might be by himself. So does that mean the North, his tag team, is going to be done with? So I don't know. I It's always interesting seeing these guys leave and, you know, where could they go? And I, I know he lives in Canada, and so his family lives there. So I don't know if. Like, hypothetically, I just don't see him going like to NXT per se, because pretty much everyone who goes to NXT has to move to Orlando. So I wonder for him somewhere other than Impact, maybe it could be AEW, because AEW literally can just fly in, do your appearance, and then fly back home. So I don't know. It, it should be interesting. Do you, I mean, I mean, do you follow a lot about Ethan Page, or do you think any speculation where he might end up? I know there's not a lot of options right now because things are still kind of closed with the pandemic, but some promotions have come back. Yeah, I mean, I have a. I I, I discovered him a couple of years ago, and I've always liked his work. I, Josh Josh Alexander, like when I found out about the North, I found out about him, and that dude, he's legit. Like he's the I, I forget like what's his Instagram name. It's like the uh, Weapon Machine or Oh yeah yeah Le- that's a, Weapon yeah that's something part of his, like, his name yeah like he he's the real deal like he's what's up. I would love to see him as a single star. Yeah, and that and that's the thing is. Uh, I'm just trying to look up real quick what's a uh, walking weapon. That's yeah, yeah, is. yeah, that. Cause, I mean, I could see him thriving as the main event. I don't know why. I kind of get beer money vibes from those two. I don't know why. I kind I kind of <laughs> Just a do. dominant tag team. Yeah, yeah. Beer! Money! There we go. There we go. Love it. Well, so I, I, I'd love to see him on his own. Yeah, so that's the thing is, like, this could be a great opportunity for Josh Alexander to really thrive on his own, have a good singles run, because... He's always been kind of second fiddle because Ethan Page is the one who talks more, is the more loud personality. So it'd be interesting, Josh Alexander, can he kind of develop his own character as a singles person? So that should be really interesting. And so, yeah, Impact Wrestling. Listen, at this point, I think with Impact Wrestling, you got to really think about they are at this point in their career or what Impact is in the wrestling industry. They're a spot where they get a lot of upcoming young talent who then move on to a bigger company and vice versa. If someone who was at a big company gets let go, they can f- go back to Impact Wrestling and at least get some work. So, you know what I mean, Philip? Does that, that make sense? Impact Wrestling is always going to have a revolving door of talent, people coming and going, people who get their start there, spend like a year or two or three, work on their craft, get noticed, and then move on to the bigger promotion get a big payday or someone like i said 
who got released from one of the big companies and is trying to find themselves or find some work and reestablish themselves. They go to impact wrestling. So impact wrestling, I, I come to realize you don't want to get, you can't get super attached to the roster because like I said, it's going to be a revolving door of talent. So it, it's always going to be just a, it's a, a, a quick landing spot for people. So, uh, but yeah, it'd be interesting to see what happens next with impact. Like I said, I think also next week's going to be like another clip show, best of show. So, it looks like, I from what the reports are, Don Callis and Kenny Omega filmed a bunch of segments. So they're probably going to splice those in probably next week's episode and then stuff in January. And I think in January, well, they'll start taping new stuff with Impact Wrestling. And the other reports are Imp- Kenny Omega is not going to wrestle any matches that's going to be played on Tuesday night. His first appearance in the ring with Impact Wrestling is not going to be till that hard to kill pay-per-view, which is smart. You don't want to... Uh, you want to save the reason for people to buy that pay-per-view to see his first ever match at impact at a pay-per-view. You don't want to blow that early. So I'm all for that. All right, let's jump on over to tonight's episode of AEW dynamite. Um, Like we always do kind of give our initial thoughts, takeaways from the episode and we'll break down the card. So yeah, Philip, your thoughts of uh, AEW dynamite's holiday bash show. Um, there were some things I, I saw that were interesting and that I thought were good. There were other things I thought were bad. I was kind of in and out of it because I was in a, engaged in a very <laughs> lethal game of Uno. <laughs> nobody, it, no, no, nobody won, by the way. Oh, man. <laughs> we were four deep. We were four deep. Nobody won. <laughs> uh, Uno's fun, man. Like uh, I used to play be- with my, aunt, my uh, uncle and my cousin all the time when he was younger years ago. It can be really fun with family, and then plus this time of the year, you know, it's the holiday, so I can see it, why playing it could be fun. It could also end relationships and friendships. You know, that's why that's why Nick Cannon and Mariah Carey broke up. Again, you know, yeah, absolutely. Hey, <laughs> hey, Nick, Nick told her to draw four, and then she drew up some them divorce papers. Yes, sir. Wow. Yes, sir. Yeah. Yep. Look at that. <laughs> uh, but I'm with you. Like, there was some good stuff here. Uh, like. Like I said, no major matches. I think this episode was filmed last week. So it, it's very interesting when stuff is filmed. And like like I said, there was like nothing super major happening. I really feel like the last couple of weeks we've been seeing a lot of the younger talent get more screen time. A lot of them facing off veterans. Some of these veterans are help putting them over. And I feel like we're still kind of seeing that. And I think hopefully... Well, it looks like next week is going to be part one of like the New Year's show that they're doing. So they're going to do like like a two part New Year's show. I think next week Chris Jericho is going to be doing commentary. Then the following week, the Snoop Dogg is going to make an appearance there, which I know has pissed off some WWE officials because you know Snoop Dogg is in the Hall of Fame and Sasha Banks' cousin. I'm surprised uh, Sasha still has her theme song. <laughs> I know, right? It's like, We're taking it away. <laughs> Goddamn yeah, pal. Put it back in the vault, damn it. Damn it, you go back to your old theme song. We need some <laughs> generic music. And so, uh, so, but, uh, it, so it's gonna be fun. So, I mean, like, I'm, I'm anticipating next week and the following week's episode are gonna probably have some big banger matches because it's gonna be part of the New Year's, uh, vibe. But at the end of this episode was solid. There was some good stuff here. Um, I really, the acclaim have been really impressing me. I've been really digging their stuff on Dynamite as of late. They've been really gaining more attention the last couple of weeks, especially building up for their match for tonight against uh, the Young Bucks. So the acclaim man have really been, I've been really been intrigued by their presentation. I know a lot of people have been super excited to see Top Fly and what they can do, but the acclaim man, that's like another young tag team that's showing up right around the same time that's really been grabbing my attention. So uh, we'll get into that in a second. Uh, so the kickoff of the show was a uh, friend of the show, our, our our best friend, the Le Champion, the demo guy, Chris Jericho, and MJF and Jake Hager joined them. They took on Top Flight uh, for the opening match here. And, uh, uh, you know, this match was it, it's interesting because you got, like, Chris Jericho, who's been in the wrestling business for over 30 years now. You got MJF, who's, what, five years in the business. And you got Top Flight, who've been in literally, like, one year each like they're both like very much just rookies here so it was very much an interesting style of like you got the high flyers and you got jericho who's more of the slower ground and pound type of work here um but yeah no it was it was interesting matchup here what you think of this opener here uh, it was cool. I'm speaking of Jericho. When I was playing Uno, my buddy uh, Sean, he was watching it with me. He was like, 
Jericho got fat. I'm like, bro, he's 50. <laughs> and, and then his rebuttal was, Shawn Michaels is older than 50. He's not fat. I'm like, you know what? Look, okay. Uh, it, <laughs> the, the bloat is part of the gimmick. <laughs> the bloat is part of the gimmick, god damn it. Uh, but, I mean, it was fine. You know, Jericho was being Jericho. He'll, you know, get a couple moves and take a bump and then roll to the outside. MJF, you know, he was um, bumping, bumping for the smaller guys. Hager was on the outside being just being Hager, an intimidating presence. Yeah. Um, but all in all, you know, um, MJF and Jericho, got the they got the dub. Yeah. I was going to say, it was kind of funny – uh, in this match, yeah, MJF was the one who had to be kind of more the workhorse to carry the match because Jericho, you know, does his like stuff in spurts. So MJF was the one who's doing a lot of the work here. Uh, I enjoyed like the end how Jericho and I believe it's Darius who went over like the announcer table and they're both like laying there. You can see Jericho's like laying there and Darius is like trying to punch him. <laughs> I'm sure, like, I wonder for him, he's what 19 years old and he's. You know, he's trying to roll around him, a ground and pound roll around with Jericho, who's one of the goats, who's what, 50 years old. So I wonder, like, he's like, probably like, oh my God, like, I am, I'm rolling around with Chris Jericho on live TV. So it must be like a really fun moment for him. And so they're off to the side. And then uh, Dante was uh, going for a, a, a spot. Hager comes, grabs him slams him down uh on the uh the side of the ring and while uh um, mjf was distracting the ref and then uh um hager threw him back in and mjf hit the his finisher on him and got the win so yeah uh team inner circle got the win i thought it was interesting seeing hager work with mjf for the longest time we've seen mjf work with wardlow but the fact to see hager work together so Kind of, you know, listen, they're they're kind of on the same page now. I know a couple weeks ago they had the ultimatum if their inner circle was going to stay together or not. So for me, it was like kind of cool seeing two members of the inner circle who were not like originally uh, brought up together or working together. And it looks like they're on the same page. That's awesome. But the big thing was after the match, Hager grabs a microphone and, you know, congrats MJF and they got the win. But he said Wardlow was a big a-hole and like, where is he? I know he's got family stuff, but where is he? He should be here. This is family stuff. He should be here. And then he said he told talked to Tony Khan and he's going to have a match against him next week. And then Jericho and MJF both look kind of shocked. Like, uh, who's going to tell him? You going to tell Wardlow? This is the start of the babyface turn for Wardlow. That's what I was, I was going to ask you. Do you think this is going to be the beginning of Wardlow turning babyface here? Dude, he could be like... He he could be a massive baby face because have you seen his indie stuff? No, but I mean I've seen like the highlights and stuff. And dude, he's big, that, but he can jump. That dude can go. He can go. It's, him him in the chase for the world title. I, I'd love to see that, dude. Like honestly, I mean, I wonder if Vince McMahon or someone be like kicking themselves that they didn't find this guy, they didn't scout him out. Like I, he's not. I don't think as big as Brock Lesnar, but he's pretty close. It almost has like. A lot of the athleticism that Brock Lesnar had, right? He reminds me of like young Brock, like when he first debuts. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. He, I, I, I see that, but I mean, like, dude, like, I don't know how long Kenny's gonna have the title. I don't know how long he's gonna be a heel, but you know, obviously, the the big match for Wardlow is gonna be him and MJF down the line. Yes. But if we can build up Wardlow to get a one off title shot, and whether they pull the trigger or not, that's up to TK. But mm -hmm. just, I, I, I see it. I see it. Yeah, you know? no, that's the thing. Is like so. Like the fact that Hager is calling Wardlow a big a hole and wants a match with him already, I was like, dude, he's got family stuff. Like, <laughs> from like a common sense thing, it's like, let him take care of his personal stuff and he'll be back. But the fact that, I don't know, I was like, Hager's motivation, I was little just kind of scratching my head. It's like, eh, it doesn't make sense. I, 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 I get it. I, I, I get it, man. You know, it's like, what, your, your real family? No, this is your real family. The, the inner circle is a family. Yeah, yeah. This yeah. is all that you should care about. Yeah, you know? so it, it was just interesting seeing that, and then uh, so it looks like um, uh, uh, they're gonna have the match, and then I wonder we we've seen it before, like MGF talking down to Wardlow and making him do stuff, and pretty much tell him that he owns him, all this stuff, and so you can see like Wardlow look defeated and pissed off. So I think they've been building up the foundation of the Easter eggs, planting the the seeds that he might turn to MJF and then therefore become a baby phase. So maybe, yeah, this is the start of that. So I'm all for it.
I want I want I want them to let that real slow burn to where we oh, can yeah. get a, a larger capacity crowd in attendance because the pop when he pushes down MJF like I can already see it. Wardlow's looking down at him. MJF is doing the like the whole oh, hold on there, big guy. You know, like I yeah. can I can see it. I can hear the pop now. Yeah, yeah. So it, it's going to be interesting to see how him and Hager go at it. How It's going to be two big big boys, two big hosses throwing haymakers. So it should be a fun match. I'm looking forward to that one. Um, let's see. So uh, next up, we uh, see Tony Schiavone come to the sting. Come to the sting. I'm sorry. <laughs> come to the ring to, to announce that sting was... <laughs> it's sting! I know. And that's the thing. He says, hey, please welcome to the ring. Sting. And I'm like, I don't know. Like when he did it the first time three weeks ago, it was cool in the moment, the emotions. Then he did it again. I was like, okay, is he going to be doing this every time? And like, I'm kind of worried that it's going to get burnt out, played out very fast, like save it for the big moment. So that's my only concern with Shivani doing that. But so, uh, Sting comes out to the ring and, I don't know. This is like the third week in a row where he starts talking, but he doesn't really reveal much. He just talks about TNT wrestling on TNT is like a jungle and he's happy to see the jungle here again. And he's talking about like the people around the ringside and he says, it reminds him of the jungle. He used to be on a TNT, which obviously is, he's, he's not flat out saying it because he can't, but he is saying like WCW. So, and then he starts talking about uh, how he became the B and Dusty Rhodes and his relationship with Dusty and how hey, Dusty's that, idea for, from the, where the face paint, all that stuff. That Dusty impersonation was spot on. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it yeah. was. He was. He was like, "We we we gonna put some color on you, baby. We gonna put some color on your face, on your tights, and on your boots, and we are gonna go get funky like a monkey, baby." <laughs> <laughs> I want to see you glow in the dark, baby. <laughs> glow in the dark. So <laughs> it's just it's awesome. Um, but yeah, so it's cool. Like it's, it's as far as sting reminding people how he pretty much was the face of WCW, the face of wrestling on TNT and then acknowledging, uh, Darby Allen, who is pretty much the face of TNT now as the TNT champion, the face of AEW, the current face of pro wrestling on TNT. So making that connection, I thought that was cool, but nonetheless, you know, he's talking, he, he's beating around the bush talking about his time in WCW being on TNT and how it means a lot to him to be on TNT again on a wrestling promotion. But obviously he can't say WCW because WWE owns it now. But I just like, and I thought it was cool the fans chanting, welcome home, welcome home. That was awesome. I mean, for me, it brought me back to like 1998 all over again. But I don't know. I'm, 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 I'm getting kind of a little frustrated because like, he still hasn't said anything major of substance. I, I, I did enjoy going back to the Dusty stuff. Like the fact he saw he's, he acknowledged Cody, Dusty's offspring, doing all this great work and bringing wrestling back to TNT. He knew he wanted to be a part of this. So, but nonetheless, it's still not like he's still not giving me a lot of reasons why, what's his back, or what's his motivation. I don't know. Can, are you able to interpret this somehow and kind of understand? What's his motivation? What's he doing here? Dude, Brandon, uh, my co-host on the Bulletcast, for those of you that don't know, he said it best. Sting is the best at not doing a whole lot by doing a whole lot. Like, you, you know <laughs> what I mean? Like, he's doing a whole lot by not doing much. Yeah. Like, yeah. okay, he tells a cool Dusty story and why he's a fan of Cody Rhodes and making that connection, but and why he loves being on a promotion that's on TNT because it reminds him of WCW, but that's it. It's like... Okay, we get it. Like for for nostalgia. Okay, you've done this for the last three weeks now. Like okay, moving on. Let's let's get into like a story here. So he acknowledges Darby Allen, but then the lights or uh, 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 Team Taz comes out, and you know they start cutting him off, and they start you know talking crap to him and then the lights go down and the lights come back on and darby is like transported himself from like the 200 section up high at, at, at daily's place to in the ring so i was like oh that's kind of cool little video editing they did there because it was pre-taped so they probably filmed this and then took a break while darby made his way to the ring so he joins the ring 
Um, and then Team Taz, you know, or Taz himself, talking talking a lot of crap. And so, what did you think about the whole interaction between Team Taz and Sting and Darby in the ring? Oh, it was cool, man. And you, no, I mean Darby, he really teleported. You know, when Saturn and Jupiter <laughs> came together, he got the powers, not the black people. He got the powers. <laughs> <laughs> please, please explain. Please explain that to anyone listening doesn't know. <laughs> So, um, I guess Saturn and Jupiter were going to be close together for the first time in like 400 or 800 years, something like that. Yeah. And apparently African-Americans were supposed to be getting powers and <laughs> become super beings. And I, I was ready. I, I was ready. I was trying to do the Spider-Man thing. Like, I'm about to be yeah. Tobey Maguire in this bitch. Like, <laughs> I'm, yeah. I'm about to do this. Like, it didn't happen. And then I, try, I tried to, like, levitate stuff. And I yeah. felt like I was, like, uh, Alyssa Milano on Charmed, conjuring up stuff. You know? My, <laughs> exactly. my buddies and I lit a candle today i felt like i was in the craft and stuff nice. like that but it, no, nothing came about so uh darby allen got the powers he got the yeah, powers that's okay okay uh but and yeah no, like you said they were talking crap and all that this, stuff this makes them look weak you're afraid of a little skinny dude in a skateboard and an old man with a bat you got hobbs who's a powerhouse you got uh brian cage uh, cage who's a powerhouse you got ricky starks. starks who's a he has a decent build you know you got hook over there who i'm sure the kid can do something <laughs> Taz's you know, and, kid. Yeah. And Taz looks like he can still drop somebody on her head. Like, come on, come on, guys. Well, this makes th- them look weak. Yeah, no, you're right. And that's the thing. So they were like, you know, talking crap and, and, and they were saying, oh, yeah, uh, they were ready to go attack Sting. And then Darby comes, makes the save. And then they stop and like, oh, we'll fight another day. And then Taz says, oh, yeah, Brian Cage is challenging Darby for the TNT title um, in two weeks. So I'm like, okay, cool. But then Brian Cage is like, I'll, I'll fight him right now. And they like, no, 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 we'll save it. We'll, we'll. So they walked away. So, yeah, I'm with you. I'm like, dude, you're afraid of a, a, a what's, how old is Sting? 61? About to be 62. Yes. And you're yeah, scared he can of get Darby. AARP. Like, what are we doing? And you're afraid of Darby Allen, little skinny guy with a skateboard. It's like, you're four monsters. You could go in there, beat the crap out. So, yeah, I'm with you. I'm like, come on. This is not believable. Question. Um, so let's say Brian Cage becomes TNT champion. What happens to the FTW title? Put it back on the wall. Taz is not. Nah, give it to give it to Hobbs, dude. <laughs> well, dude, come on. That, that championship. I hate to say it. Like, what's the point of it now? It really is decoration on Brian Cage's waist. Like, yeah, it, I mean, it's it's not it's not this one. The Bull Cat Championship. It's not the Bull. Which you know, Huey. I'm sorry you lost it. You know, it's it's all right, man. January fourth, my birthday. You have not no, another opportunity. I should be like the Miz and be like, I did. Not, I was not the one who cashed it in. I should still have it. I'm gonna call my lawyers. <laughs> Tell Brandon that I'm like the Miz. Someone else cashed it in. It was not me. Or no, Brandon or yeah, you cashed it in, not Brandon. So it's 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 uh, invalid. We're just we, we, rip we, up that we, contract. We we should do that. You never know. But yeah, man, I mean it just <laughs> I, I don't know what the FTW title is gonna do, man. You know, if they defended it more then maybe, I guess. All right. I, if, here's, or you know what? You know what? Put it on Starks. Have somebody actually beat Starks for it. Yeah. There, well, there we go. That, that'd be interesting. Well, I just for Team Taz, I just feel like they exist and they call themselves badasses, but th- like they're just kind of they, they haven't they, really done anything they, to yeah. prove it yet. Yeah, yeah, exactly. They talk a big game, but they haven't done anything significant. The only thing I think of is I know there's been rumors that AEW wants to uh, bring in like a six man tag championship, kind of like what Ring of Honor has, or I know in uh, Mexico. TK's confirmed it. Oh, it's confirmed? Okay. Well, New Japan does it as well. I mean, you think about it, there are a lot of like three man factions in AEW. I can see Team Taz having that. All three Starks, Hobbs, and Cage having that. That could be kind of cool. So I don't know what's the timeline when they're going to introduce that. But I mean, I, I would like to see Team Taz get something of value so they become like more of a badass faction. That's all I'm saying for that. So. Uh, next up, we saw MJF talking to the camera. He was in the backstage area, and he said, follow me. He says, this is not just for the camera. Like, I really want you guys to be here. Um, and Santana Ortiz are playing a game of cards, and it was kind of interesting. He offers his condolences to Santana, who was on the last episode because a uh, uh, family member passed away, and gives his condolences and said he lost his grandpa recently as well, and... Which was interesting. Like he really was kind of showing some emotional support. Uh, shook hands, gave him a hug, and that was the end of it. I I, I thought MGF was going to say something else, but no, 
that was the end of it. So what do you think of this kind of little emotional segment here? Um, you know, I got to know Maxwell during the campaign where we were campaigning for the championship yeah. seat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, you know, Maxwell, he, he loved his grandfather dearly. You know, I had a couple of conversations with his grandfather. He wanted to know how Maxwell was doing. Maxwell's a great guy, you know. He, you know, he, he, he's a really nice person. He was just mm-hmm. trying to, you know, really like, hey, I know what you're going through. Mm-hmm. I understand. You know, just trying to bond with his teammate. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's all it was, you know. That's okay. all it is. And we were privileged enough to catch that on camera. Yeah, I know. It, I'm really surprised. I really thought when Santana Ortiz left the room, I thought MJF was going to, like, do something to the camera and wink or something like, oh, I'm glad that's over with. Like, I just said that just so you wouldn't beat me up or something like that. I thought it was going to be a, a big swerve, but no, it wasn't. So for right now, it looks like he was sincere. So should be interesting What's, what they're going to do with that next. Uh, next up, we saw Jurassic Express taking on Coke Cabana and the Dark Orders number five and ten. Uh, not much to say here. I really thought this was just a way, an excuse to kind of get Jurassic Express back on Dynamite and just give them an easy victory. The finish was dope. Like right. that. That was dope. I forgot how good Jungle Boy was, bro. I really did. But Lucha, uh, Luchasaurus. Like he uh, flipped him over and then Jungle Boy caught him with a sit-up power bomb. Yeah, great finish. I mean, that was the big takeaway. <laughs> was yeah, this. We, uh, we finally get an explanation to their numbers. It's the order in which they were entered into the group, but it's not a cult. Um, I, I actually, actually have an announcement. I, I've, I've officially joined the Dark Order, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, my God. I'm so sorry. <laughs> what, what are you sorry about? I get to hang out with Brody Lee and Aunt Anna J. I mean, you know, I get to yeah, yeah, right. get, get to hang out with Evil Uno and Stu Grayson and Johnny Hungry. And Johnny Hungry. You know, I, I, I will. Uh, I haven't gotten a number yet, but once once I get my number, then then you guys are uh, you guys are going to I put in a, I put in a petition. There there have been some gaps. You know, people have left. What number do you want? <laughs> 69 god. no 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 god no god no i mean I'll, I'll take the number seven i'll take i'll take the number seven you can wear the same outfit no 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 god no god no but um you know so ladies and next week when we do a recap i will have my number and uh, I'll, I'll let everybody know Oh, I should get in the click shirts with numbers on it. We all have numbers. <laughs> Dude, that's oh, I should have done that. <laughs> oh, man. But uh, so we see uh, uh, after the win, Jurassic Express is in the ring. Tony Schiavone joins them to interview them. And then uh, I, I like this part uh, on the big screen. FTR shows up with Tolly Blanchard. They start cutting a promo. And the Tolly Blanchard starts talking. And he calls them Jurassic Park. And you see... Uh, FTR, uh, uh, Dax Harwood and Cash Wheeler, like looking at each other and smirking. So I wonder if Tully, like, legit messed up and did not call them. He called them hey, Jurassic Park on accident and said it, Jurassic it Express. It, it, it made it better. That <laughs> it I guess, was funny. But you can tell they're looking at each other, like, they, like, standing behind, they're standing behind Tully and they're looking at each other and they're smirking. So they're probably like, he screwed up, man. You know, have you, have you seen this? Uh, uh, I mean, it's like a TikTok, but they've made their way onto Instagram where somebody says something and they're like, what did he say? Like, it was, kind of, it was, kind of, it was kind of one of those moments, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I lied. But anyway, like I said, they're going to have a matchup coming against each other. Uh, they said that they are the 2020 Tag Team of the Year, FTR, and yeah, they're they're going to come after. Uh, 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 I was going to say Jurassic Park, Jurassic Express. So that should be a fun matchup pretty soon because you know Luchasaurus, what he can do as a big man, Jungle Boy with his high flying skills versus FTR, who are the more traditional tag team. So um, I'm looking forward to that matchup here. So it'd be interesting though who goes over. Does FTR go over and win and then try to go back into the title picture scene? Or does Jurassic Express keep the momentum going of them winning? And like I said, they've been doing a lot of stuff on Dark. We haven't seen them on Dynamite as much. So I thought this win was just to help establish them and remind people that they exist who don't watch Dark regularly. So, yeah, I'm kind of curious what 2021 is going to be for Jurassic Express as a tag team. Um, Next up, a segment uh, involving... AEW World Champion Kenny Omega. So him and Don Callis were at a hotel. Alex Marvez was there, ran up with him with the microphone and camera. And it's, I don't know, what do you think of the whole segment here, of the, the promo here? 
Alex Marvez has become paparazzi at Jace at, at this point. <laughs> like he's just, Kenny, 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 can, can we ask you a question? Yeah. What, what are your What are your thoughts on <laughs> you know? Yeah. Like like when TMZ catches somebody out, out of the airport or something. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That's exactly what's going on there. Yeah. So long story short, I mean Don Callis one he called out Tony Khan and said, uh, Tony. How can you have your 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 wrestlers here at AEW run a mock and kind of run everything? And I was thinking to myself, like Don on Impact Wrestling, you had a guy get shot on TV, Johnny Bravo, right? <laughs> like Johnny had- jo- Johnny Bravo is a candidate for OMG Moment of the Year at the Cassidy Awards, ladies and gentlemen. A little tease right there for what's coming yeah, up on the yeah. broadcast. But uh, bro, like with the with the whole match being made with Phoenix, Kenny could have been like, "I'm an EVP. I'm not doing that." Like he could. <laughs> Like, like, we know. Let's just play it up. Who gives a damn? Well, that's the thing. So then Kenny Omega starts, you know, going to a heel promo and just pretty much was really downgrading Ray Phoenix and saying, like, you're injury prone or you lost all these other big matches coming, you know, in the tournament. You lost this. You lost that. You're injury prone. Like, you're not someone that um, he choked in AAA, even mentioned AAA. So at the eliminator tournament, he uh, lost against his brother. So he really was just... uh um selling the fact that he thinks Ray Phoenix is just not a really big threat to him. So I kind of enjoyed that as far as Kenny Omega really just talking down to Ray Phoenix here for their match coming up next week. So I enjoyed the promo, you know, the heelish promo from Kenny. I just think, I know a lot of people think Kenny's not the best on the microphone, but at least I think as a heel, he has more charisma than when he was as a baby face. So I think him right now is much more intriguing than him before when he was a baby face in the tag team. I, I will say this with a straight face. Yeah. I think Lana is a better promo than Kenny Omega. <laughs> yeah. Really? You think so? <laughs> yep. Yep. You know what I just said. Well, so it's just, it, it, it's, it's interesting. Cause like I said, Kenny was really just overselling all of his accomplishments from the past year and just how little Ray Phoenix has done. So really setting up like, you know, David versus Goliath, if you want to call it that. So, it, it, next week's match should be a banger. I am looking forward to that one. Uh, next up, it was the Butcher who, singles action. He's still accompanied by the Blade and the Bunny, uh, taking on Bastard Pac, who had uh, uh, Penta El Zero Miedo. Uh, Eddie Kingston also came out, but joined the commentary team. Um, dude, I actually really enjoyed this match. Like they started pretty aggressive, going at the Butcher and the and Pac. And then even like Pac was like kicking the butcher in his thighs and legs. And it was really cool, man. Like the butcher for a big man. He also had some new gear, like the black pants with the red belt, which was kind of interesting. Yeah. yeah I don't, I don't know what the hell that was. was stick to like just, a pirate. <laughs> stick to just the traditional black boots, knee pads and trunks, but yeah, but yeah. Uh, I, I enjoyed the intensity. It was for, for a big man. The butcher was keeping up with Pac. They were going all over the ring. It was pretty fast paced. I really did enjoy this match. How about you? It was cool, man. You're going to buy the Butcher's Christmas album? Oh, with uh, Every Time I Die? Yeah, you know, he's in a band or whatever. Yeah. No, I've interviewed the lead singer of that band at Warped Tour a few years ago, Every Time really? I Die. Yeah. That's that's what's up, dude. But see, I didn't know at the time that the Butcher, well, that the guitarist in that guy's band was a pro wrestler at the time. He was probably doing indie stuff. But now looking back on it, I mean, I would have asked him, like, where's your guitarist, man? I heard he's going to be a wrestler or something. I don't know. I wish I would have done that. But uh, I really enjoyed this match. At the end, though, it got a little foolish because uh, Butcher was, like, taking his time to go for the pin on Pac. And then Eddie Kingston was, like, shouting at him, like, hey, like, speed it up. Go after him. And, like, Eddie stood up. And then Butcher looks over. And it was, like, this, like, this real odd pause or delay. Like, Butcher kept staring at him, not doing anything. And finally, Pac recovered and ultimately got a comeback and hit his finisher for the win. So I don't know what you think of that ending though, of like Eddie Kingston. It was like, he was being a manager, but from afar from the commentary booth, I almost felt like, dude, if you're going to start shouting out orders, get off your ass and get closer to the ring and be like a manager then. Yeah. I mean, usually the, I don't, I don't know. I, I don't know. Usually the baby faces act stupid. Like, wait, I, I hear their music. I'll, I'll, I mean, this didn't happen. Like, I'll hear their music. I'll look at the entranceway. I know they're not going to be there, but I'll do it anyway. You know, yeah. he had one of those kind of just dumb moments. I'm like, well, that's stupid. Why are you doing that? Yeah. So I don't know. I, I thought the finish was a, for how great the intensity was for that type of finish. I was like, uh, 
but I guess Pac is a baby face now, I guess. Um, and then we also saw, uh, um, uh, um, oh my God, uh, Lance Archer come out. He confronted Eddie Kingston. So it's really interesting, like this whole dynamic, like Lance Archer is going after Eddie Kingston, but then, uh, uh, Pac and, and, and Pentagon or Penta Zero Miedo, uh, we're going after Butch the Blade. So you got all these guys kind of mixing it up together. So I wonder at some point we're going to get a three on three match. Is Lance and Eddie Kingston's going to happen soon? So I don't uh-huh. know. We'll see. If you look at the last episode of the Bullet Cast, it's named Quadrado de la Morte for a reason. That's right. I'm sorry. For I totally forgot. The square, I totally... the square. Or we get Pac versus uh, Lance Archer and a Eddie Kingston on a forklift match. <laughs> it's WCW Vince Russo now. Yeah, dude. Get, get a, or get a. What was it? Was it the the San? Was it the Forty ers on a pole match? But what, what was that one where where Booker T wins the WCW championship, oh. but then he drops it? It's like a Forty ers something match. The Gold Rush match. Or so I, yeah, I got to remember. You, you know that. what I'm talking yeah, about? Yeah, yeah. Oh my god, it was years ago, like <laughs> high school for me. But damn. Uh, so next up, we see Jay Cargill uh, backstage with a message to Brandy Rhodes, and she just said. Oh, like as soon as she comes on the scene, Brandy gets pregnant. So like, oh, she's using her pregnancy to avoid a wrestling match with Jay Cargill. Um, and Shaq called out Cody. So she's calling her out. So what's next? And she just said, you guys better find me a worthy opponent for my time because she's doesn't like wasting her time. So I don't know. What do you think of Jade's promo hill, uh, pro- a promo here? Um, it was fine. You know, it's yeah. better. Then, you know, when Brandy came out and called her a Heffa, <laughs> it was better than that. So. Yeah, yeah. It was cool. So, anyway, she's really selling the fact that, like, she's this big talent and Brandy is avoiding her, scared of her. And so that's why she's got pregnant. So that way she doesn't, can't, she has a reason not to face her in the ring. So, anyway, I'm still kind of holding back any judgment about Jade until. I see her in the ring, how she performs. She talks a big game as a heel. Even if you follow her on Twitter, she really calls out a lot of people. Like, I don't know if she's in character, you know, Philip, like, 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 like in gimmick, like, like she's trying to like call out all the haters, but she responds to a lot of people and kind of gets nasty on Twitter. So I don't know if this is part of the character or she's legit. Like, like, uh, uh, dealing with all these people that like the backlash from her character. I don't know. So it's going to be interesting. I mean, how I mean, she handles it, dude, like a majority of these guys, like they'll, they'll put out that stuff. And if like the person they're talking crap about responds, like, Hey, 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 this person was on TV. They replied to my tweet. Oh my God. Oh my God. You know, like they'll, they'll do stupid shit like that. So yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm not too worried about it. Okay. Yeah. Well, anyway, like I said, I, I, I want to see in the ring. It's like enough talking. Just, Give me some action here. Uh, next up, Tony Schiavone. Tony Schiavone was busy tonight. He had a lot of segments where he had to get up out of the chair and go to the ring. So he he earns his money. Excalibur and JR, they just sit there. Tony Schiavone is constantly working, man. He's the MVP of AEW. JR has earned the right to just sit there. Excalibur, I don't give a damn about. <laughs> so Shivani uh, t- uh, talked to Kip Sabian and Penelope Ford and the best man Miro, and they pretty much uh, pretty much announced the wedding day and they had a little video package. It was best friends. They tricked everyone thinking best friends were going to come out and attack him, but uh, Miro shouted that February third is going to be a beach wedding. It's called AEW's Beach Break. It's going to be live on Dynamite. So cool. That's going to be like their next big. Uh, probably like pay per view level show on Dynamite, so it should be cool. Beach Break. I mean, that was something they uh, trademark I think earlier this year. So I don't that's know. What you... the, that's the name of Orange Cassidy's uh, finisher, not the punch, but you know when he drops him. That's that's the name of his finisher. Oh, that's right. Okay, so yeah. I don't know. It'll be interesting. A kind of what wedding we're gonna get? We're gonna get like. Macho Man, Miss Elizabeth, but on a beach. I don't know. Like, what kind of Miro, wedding ceremony? Miro needs to turn on Kip Sabian, become a monster, and like not be stupid. That's all. That's all I want. I because I didn't. I didn't even watch this announcement. I don't. I, I really don't care about Mi- Miro and those guys. I know. Well, and that's the thing. Miro, like Miro, was standing there in front of the screen, and Shivani was like moving, trying to get out of his way, and he kept looking at him. I thought that was kind of funny that interaction. But yeah, Miro, it's like it would be great if he turns on him turns on Kip at the wedding. He says, I'm tired of you holding me back. Or like, here I am at another wedding segment. 
a year ago, I was in a wedding segment, and and look what's done for me. So maybe you can use this opportunity to go like full beast mode or something. So yeah, I'm with you on that. Uh, next up, we saw Evil Uno of the Dark Order, your favorite faction in AEW, taking on Dustin Rhodes here. Lee Johnson came out with him, part of the Nightmare family. And, um, you know, it's just it, Dustin's looking for payback for uh, Evil Uno, kept like offering him a spot in Dark Order, but as number seven. So, I mean, good match here. Dustin got the victory. I don't know, not much else to say here, right? Bro, he won with a bulldog. <laughs> I know, like that's the second time in, in like, like the last couple of weeks. Maybe he couldn't get him up for the. Uh, it used to be the final cut, but the final reckoning, the you know, kind of the suplex, uh, mm-hmm. uh, twisting, mm-hmm. twisting suplex that he does. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, good for them. And then after the match, Uno is like begging and asking him to join again. And then Dustin was like really gonna. He got pretty close, like for the handshake, but then he kicked him or punched him, wherever it was. So. And then uh, Dark Order comes out and starts attacking him. So, I don't know. I, let me ask you this. Like, in all seriousness, Dark Order, outside of Brody Lee and Anna J, they've gotten victories. But the rest of the tag team, or the rest of the faction, have just been jokes. Have they really won anything, done anything? Like, I just wonder. I think Brody Lee, okay, when they first made a debut, a lot of people were like, who are these people? And it was, like, kind of joking on them. Brody Lee, when he showed up, he made them kind of legit. And I know they've been getting over on being the elite and stuff, but I just wonder how much longer can this go for this this group here? Like, really, what's the long term plans for them? Are they eventually going to break up at some point? I don't know, man. I think when Brody Lee is there, they do they do have an umph about them because you know, he lights a fire under their asses to like, no, get serious. We're about business. You know what I mean? And uh, I, I I don't know. I'd like, I like I I want to see them hold all the gold. Really? I, I, I would I would pop for that, dude. <laughs> like you get like, uh, who? Let's see, you get Silver and uh, Reynolds the tag titles. You get Colt Cabana the TNT title. You get Anna J the woman's title. You get Brody Lee the world title. Like I want to I want to see something interesting happen. Wow, you're going all in on them. <laughs> Absolutely, bro. And then you get Grayson Uno and uh, Ten. You get them the trip. Uh, a triple man Six titles. Man tag, yeah. Six man tag title. Yeah, let's do something. That would be dope. Mm, all right, we'll see what happens. Uh, next up, a segment I'm actually looking forward to talk to you about. So, Shivani, once again, busy with the backstage segment. This time with Sean Spears. And Sean Spears pretty much said that, like, he feels like he's been digging out of the hole for the past 18 months. And it's because of Tony Khan and Cody Rhodes pushed him into that. And he feels like. He's kind of in a spot in his career, very similar to he said how he was with New York. So he didn't say WWE, but he said New York. So uh, he wants to come out of that hole. He wants to kind of get back on track with his career. Um, he said, I can work anywhere in the world with the talent I have. And I waste my time with guys like you. You tell Tony Khan, all the executive vice pricks that I'll come back if I feel like it's and that's what Spears said. So he took his glove, the one he's been using in matches, he threw it to the side and also keep in mind, Tolly Blanchard wasn't present. So, how do you want to interpret this? Do you think Sean Spears is already kind of getting like a repackaging again? Like, he debuted with AEW after he left WWE, and he said he was like the hot free agent that they signed. He pretty much acknowledged that for like the last 18 months that AEW's existed that he signed with them. He hasn't done much, anything significant. And I agree. He he had like the one match with Cody, hit Cody with the chair. He's been doing a lot of stuff on Dark here and there, but he hasn't really done anything on AEW of significant. So it really sounds like he's like putting it out there that he's trying to come back and trying to reestablish himself. But like I said, he threw the glove away. No Tully Blanchard. So I wonder if he's dropping the glove gimmick. He's drop, dropping Tully Blanchard. Is Tully just going to focus, focus on FTR only? So I don't know. How do you want to interpret this? I think Tully, you know, dropped him because he's been focusing on FTR. You know, they won the tag titles. They had gold. Sean didn't. You know what I mean? Yeah. He didn't win. He didn't win the uh, tag title, the TNT uh, tournament, which was a rematch for Cody in the first yeah. round. Let's not forget. And I mean, Sean Spears, like the dude, got over just putting up his hands and saying ten. Like yeah. he got, like he got so over they didn't want him on TV. Yeah, <laughs> that's yeah. that's how over the dude got. Yeah, and I mean, you know. 
I, I like Sean Spears. I've met him when he's come to the Bay Area. He's a super nice guy. And like, if you've listened yeah. to him on Unrestricted, you know, he sees himself as a, a workhorse in like that uh, mid cart title picture. I want to see him get there. How are we going to get there? I, I don't know. This could be a repackage. I'd, I'd be fine and open to that. Or maybe he, he goes somewhere else. You know, so, they, they have a partnership with Impact. I could see him popping up there. Yeah. Well, and that's the thing with Impact. Well, a couple things. So when you say Mick, he really wants to be the mid card workhorse. Is he talking like about like he, a TNT championship? Yeah, like he sees himself like at a TNT, not a T, like a TV or an Intercontinental title level. Like he's always seen himself as that. Yeah, so that's cool. I, I, and that, I, that's I'm not great. opposed to it. Well, I, I respect him saying that because I'm sure everyone or a lot of wrestlers think that they should be in the main event scene or they should be the world champion. And there's a lot of them who don't ever reach that point. But so for him to really kind of maybe have a little more realistic viewpoint of his career or where he stands. I, I respect that. He's like, he, he knows maybe where his limitations are and that's where he wants to be at. So more power to him. But yeah, so the fact that he threw the glove and that was still like a fairly thing he just started doing within the last couple months and no Tolly there. So I wonder what kind of new repackaging is he trying to go for? And listen, at the end of the day, I want everyone to be successful or at least in their minds feel successful. And yeah, to be honest, like I said, for the last year and a half, he hasn't really done anything major. He had the initial run in with Cody where he hit Cody in the chair, busted him open in the head. They had their match. He lost. And then, you know, he, he joined or allied himself, aligned himself with Tully Blanchard. It had some moments, but nothing major. He got the loaded, and then Tully gave him the loaded glove, did some stuff there, but nothing major. He had a little, little back and forth with Scorpio Sky. That was mostly on Dark. And then, even on, I think, last week's episode of Dark, I saw the highlight. Scorpio Sky threw him through the wall of Britt Baker's like little dentist office TV show setup. So he hasn't done anything major. So maybe this is like another attempt to start getting him over. Yeah, whatever that dentist show thing is, like put that on dynamite. I'd love to see that. That'd be funny. Yeah, I haven't I haven't seen much of it. I just seen like little clips of it. Uh, I, yeah, is it gonna be like a like a barber shop type thing, or like a like a like a, a Piper's Pit? Yeah, so. smack instead of coconuts, she's gonna hit them over the head with uh, knockout gas or something. But I, I kinda, don't know. I, I kind of respect the fact that they save it for dark. Maybe it, like they're practicing there, and then maybe when she gets comfortable or gets good, then they'll move it over to dynamite or bump it up. But in the meantime, yeah, it's just on on dark. So, but anyway, like I said, for Sean Spears. Okay, what's I, I really think this could be like his last hoorah in AEW. Like what's like okay, you were brought in once, you got a couple like uh uh variables added to him, you know, Tolly, the glove, those are obviously not working. What's the next step? Because like, after that I'm like if if whatever else you think of doesn't work, <laughs> dude, I don't know what else will at this point. So hey, this kind of reminds me of Glenn Jacobs. He's had his Isaac Yanka moment. He's had his uh, fake diesel moment. Yeah, he might, he might be, he might hit his cane. Yeah, finally, we don't, we don't know. Hey, but at the end of the day, he he's winning in life. He's married to Peyton Royce, so he can't feel too bad for the guy. Hey, you know what? He should just come back as Stan. <laughs> that was the highlight of his career. He should carry papers. To the I want to, I want to, I want to interview him and ask him, like, hey man, so how often do you get recognized as Stan? Like, be, like, be real. <laughs> uh, do, do ask you, are you Stan? Yes. Uh, okay. Another segment I cannot wait to talk to you about was um, uh, we see he, uh, Hikaru Shida, AEW Women's World Champion, being interviewed by Dasha. And Abaddon comes up and just starts attacking her. And then all of a sudden they break her apart. And all of a sudden, uh, Hikaru she just kind of gets up and starts walking to the entrance ramp for her, her, for her match. So this kind of little awkward transition right there. Uh, but next up, uh, Sheeta has a match against Alex, uh, is it Gracia? I think that's how you pronounce it. Uh, oh, I thought her name was Garcia. My bad. <laughs> it's Gracia. So, oh, Gracia. Okay. Uh, it was an okay match. Um, uh, uh, you know, Sheeta picks up, uh, the win. You know, it's pretty basic, uh, quick match here. But the main thing was, after the match, Abaddon comes out and starts attacking Sheeta again. They start brawling on the outside, on the over on the ringside there. And it's going back and forth. It's like, oh, it's okay. It wasn't too like hard hitting or anything. It wasn't too believable. But then all of a sudden, Abaddon grabs Sheeta, bites into her neck like a vampire, 
rips it off him. You see the blood dripping on Abaddon's face. And then Sheeta is like screaming in pain. And I was like, okay, she's holding her neck. And like, I didn't see anything. And it took a little too long. But then finally starts seeing the blood start gushing out. And I'm like, oh, oh my God here. And of course, I immediately thought of uh, uh, Shayna Baszler when she bit Becky Lynch earlier this year on Raw before the pandemic. Um, how about you? Was that kind of your initial thought as well? They'll be like, all right, this was like nine months apart. They won't know the difference, guys. <laughs> I know. They won't know the difference. I Look, was like, dude, dude, like, I don't give a damn about Abandoned. I, I keep saying that. Like, I don't care. I do not care. Like, let them have the match and then be done with her. I, I don't want to see her again. Yeah, they think I think they kind of dropped the ball with with Abaddon as far as really establishing her and building her up as a threat for the contender or as the number one contender. They just kind of threw her in the mix, and all of a sudden, like you're supposed to be scared by her, and it's like, well, you haven't really known much about her. What the hell happened to the ranking system? Isn't Nyla Rose like the number one contender? Like, what the hell? Are we- Where's she been? She's just been like <sighs> appearing backstage every once in a while for. Uh, Jay Cargill's fights. Dude, oh. like, it's a ranking system. The number one contender has a match. They lose, okay, the number two. They lose, then the number three. They lose, yeah. then the number four. It's not hard. What are we doing? I know. I know. What the hell are we doing? But the biggest takeaway, it was, this is what I texted you, was they cut to Sheeta, and you see the blood, like, gushing out, like, the the fake blood, whatever, gushing out, and Sheeta's in pain. JR no-sold it. Like... He was like, uh, say, oh, look at this. I think I forgot exactly what he said, but like, oh, she's bleeding. All right, coming up next is uh, main event time. It's going to be the Young Bucks versus the Acclaim. He's already like, like you see this woman screaming in pain, blood gushing, and he's just so mellow, just already looking ahead to the next segment and promoting the next segment, the main event match. I'm like, dude, guys, show some effing emotion. There's a woman who got her neck bit like a vampire. She's gushing blood like act shocked and surprised well i mean that, that would have been a good moment for, for one of his by god by god she's she she's bleeding more than a than a than a two dollar steak did he you forget know, to show like emotion I, I don't know what happened dude i, I have no idea that's what, what just happened. ruined it for me because it's like i was like oh my god she's bleeding even though it was like we saw this earlier this year on monday night raw but i was like okay let me just go with the flow and react but like Jr. no sold them. I'm like, come on, man! Yeah, he, like he could, he could have been like, instead of the crimson mask being on her face, it's on the side of her neck. Like, oh my god, <laughs> get this Abaddon person out of here! So anyway, somebody get the medics. <sighs> anyway, I was just frustrated. I was like, why should I care when the announcers don't even care about this segment, the rivalry for the women's championship, the feud here? Like when the announcers don't even care, why should I care? That's what was annoying. So, all right, main event time. It was the acclaim taking on AEW Tag Team Champions, the Young Bucks here, dude. I will admit, I really enjoyed this match here. It really, Young Bucks. We know what we're gonna get now. It's gonna be high flying. It's gonna be a lot of big spots. But the acclaim, I don't know too much about them. I didn't watch Dark. I, I guess they were recently signed within the last month or two. They've been building up a bunch of wins on Dark. I haven't seen it, but they've been making appearances the last few weeks. Like, remember, they interfere with the Young Bucks, like, backstage segment, calling them out. They've been winning on Dynamite the last couple weeks, calling out the Young Bucks. They've been really becoming, like, a thorn in the side for the Young Bucks here, and they finally got their main uh, championship match here. But I really like their style. How about you? What did you think of the main event here? It was dope. You know how I can tell you it was dope? My buddy Vinny, strictly WWE. Like, he doesn't even watch NXT. He watches Raw and SmackDown only. We we were watching this at his house. He had a good time. Really? Like he, yeah, like, he was, like, the near falls. He was like, oh! Like, he, <laughs> like he thought this was dope, man. And, hey, look, bro, the Young Bucks, like, live, it's it's a different level. They are legit. Yeah. They, they are what's up. And I thoroughly enjoyed this. Some young guns getting an opportunity at, uh, one of the best tag teams on the planet, and uh, they everybody thrived. Everybody came out okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I was really impressed with the impressed with the acclaim as far as their style. They're not high flying, but yet they, you know they, they are athletic. They're big, they're big muscular dudes. They're not like super tall, but they're thick muscular guys. Um, very much like a cool throwback to some of the older tag teams back in the day. And I love you know they they could jump and you, you know and and 
mix it up athletically with the high flyers. They can keep up with them, but then they can do their power spots as well. I love um, at the beginning of the show, the Acclaim had like uh, their rap, their little music video, <laughs> calling that was it Buck Season. So they were like uh, going out and like uh, going to go hunting for some young bugs. So I like the music video in the beginning of the show. And very much, uh, I think the young bugs on Being the Elite called them like uh, John Cena wannabes. <laughs> so uh, I wonder at some point we're gonna, the Acclaim... <laughs> Are they going to turn into some little thugonomics here, like old school John Cena? Hey, man. I mean, you, you see it behind me. That's like the end of the thugonomics thing with the poster yeah. right there. <laughs> hey, you know, hey, thugonomics, Cena was what's up. I'd love to see the acclaimed have that moment. Yeah. I mean, look, enough years has gone by that someone else can kind of piggyback off that gimmick, you know? Because Cena, that was what, like 15 years ago now? That was, oh, that was longer. That was like 17, 18. Exactly. So, yeah, it, it, enough time has passed. Someone else can kind of pick up where he left off. But no, I, I can say, I really think I like their match, their athleticism. I don't, it's really tough to explain. Like, it just, you know, they're hard hitting, but yet they can uh, go flying as well and keep up with the Young Bucks on some of the big power spots or high flying spots. I really enjoy their stuff. And it's really interesting. AEW's really got a bunch of young tag teams right now. The Acclaim and Top Fly have really been kind of coming on the scene around the same time. So they really got two hot young tag teams on their roster now. And I like how both of them are getting a lot of screen time right now. They really started building up the future. Like I said, I feel like the last few weeks of Dynamite, a lot of the young people began a lot of screen time. And really, like you said, building up that future. Um, but at the same time, I feel kind of bad for a private party because remember a year ago private party was in a similar position they were the young hot team they who got beat signed. them in the in the uh, tag team tournament private party beat them beat who the acclaim the, no the bucks oh the bucks yeah 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 so i feel kind of bad for private party i feel like they're a little bit on the sideline now pushed to the side to make room for top flight and the acclaim so maybe at some point maybe private party can start a program with one of them and be like, hey, we were here before you guys. You guys are the, the new shiny toy. We were the previous shiny toy. Or, or, how about this? The way the Hardys, the Dudleys, and Edge and Christian used to do it, three, th- three young, hungry teams going at it to see who's the best. I mean, I'm not saying there could be tables, ladders, and chairs, but we could do that with a private party, the acclaimed in a top flight. Ooh, that could be good. I'd be down Maybe for that. that's what they're building for. That would be dope. And when totally. it's a sh- shot at the Bucks at like Revolution or something like that. Yeah, dude. That could be, or maybe the three of them, their match is at Revolution, and then you build up for double or nothing with the Young Bucks. You could do that, or, you know, let's say they open the show and then later on the night they face the Bucks for the titles. Yeah, dude. Okay, I like that possibility. But like I said, I see the acclaim. Uh, top flight getting a lot of love recently. I'm like, well, don't forget about private party, man. They are a top notch team. I mean, like AEW has so many great tag teams. So, but like I said, I really like the acclaim right now, what they've been doing. Uh, ultimately, you know, they, they almost had the win there where, uh, uh, they hit, uh, uh, I think it was, uh, Matt with the, with the boom box, go for the pin. Um, they kick out, but let me ask you this. So how many times in matches we've seen a ref bump or something and the ref's knocked out and someone's trying to get the pin. No, there's no one make the count. I'm like, ah, oh, and they're trying to wake up the ref. Other matches, we see the same scenario, a ref bump, but then someone will look like wave to the back, like, Hey, bring someone out. And then another ref will come out. I always wanted to know why certain matches a ref bump happens. No one else comes in. Another ref doesn't come out to help fill in that spot or replace them. But other times, there's a ref bump and a ref does come out, like we saw tonight. Drama, Huey. It's, it's like, all about the choose? drama. It should be consistent. Like, or, you know, bump- maybe there's just a ref closer to the entrance way at the time. Like, I mean, you, you you've seen the clip of uh Charles Robinson running down the ramp at WrestleMania 24 <laughs> to, in Taker versus uh, Edge. Yeah, hey man, it, you know it. Some, it just depends. It yeah. just depends. I just love. I mean, it's, it, this is and that's just my own. I'm not saying it's an AEW issue. This is just wrestling issue for years. 
other promotions have done it where some matches is a ref bump and then no ref comes out and makes the save. So the baby face, whoever's trying to get the pin, no one's there to count. But then sometimes when there is a ref bump, another ref does immediately come running in to help finish the match out. Hey, I want to see, <laughs> I want to see like, let's say, uh, like a ref goes down and then they send out another one. And then like they get dropped by like a wrestler and then they just keep dropping them. And then Aubrey uh-huh. comes out and they're like, well, am I going to hit a woman? Hey, ah, you know, I got, like, got like yeah, sit yeah. out the whole ref roster. Dude. <laughs> yeah. yeah, <laughs> That'd be funny. <laughs> they go through the whole one. They're all laid out there one by yeah. one. But uh, eventually young bucks do uh, hit a, a BTE trigger on Max Caster and uh, Matt Pins caster and Young Bucks retain their title. So really great main event here. I really dig it. I, I, I said I didn't. Ha- I, I had kind of low expectations just because you know I don't know too much about the acclaim and the Young Bucks. You kind of know what you get at this point with the type of matches that they have. But I really like the chemistry both teams brought to the table here. So great main event and looking forward to next week's uh, part one of uh, their New Year's Eve or Bash show, New Year's shows or whatever it's going to be. Jericho and commentary. Stoop Dog the following week. Jericho's going to be wrestling next week. Darby being two weeks against uh, Brian Cage. So we're going to get some more titles on the line, some more good stuff with uh, Dynamite, man. So looking forward to it all. Should be a lot of fun. So, Oh, no, absolutely, absolutely. I'm, I'm, I'm so excited. Awesome. Well, on that note, let's start wrapping things up. Philip, where can all the clicksters find you online? Oh, my God. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, just by the way, Chris Jericho is a uh, – he's running away with the Commentator of the Year award for the Casties, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Our our buddy, hey, our buddy's doing good. He's he's doing great. Jericho, Le Champion, we're going to have to have some more uh, – we're going to have to get Lucy with the goosey whenever all this is over, bud. <laughs> uh, ladies and gentlemen, you can find me at Heel Antoine, H-E-E-L-A-N-T-W-I-N-E, on the Twitter and the Instagram. Cheeklate TV just uploaded a video of my buddy Vinny and his uh, friend Maritza – each eating twenty tacos, it came out to one hundred and sixty dollars. Yeah, man, it's it's something you you might want to see. Kevin Hart makes an appearance. You, you have to watch that. Chicle TV, C H I K L E TV on Instagram and YouTube. Please go check it out. Complex conversations. I do work there, and of course, my claim to fame is the Bullet Cast, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, the Bullet Cast on Instagram and uh, Instagram and YouTube. Bulletcast on Twitter, Bulletcast on Facebook, Bulletcast on Patreon. I just uploaded Noobs Watch Wrestling. My buddy John, who I wrestled with in high school, he and his girlfriend, Brittany, I showed them WrestleMania 19, Brock and uh, Kurt for the WWE title, and he pops massive when Brock does a shooting star and gets concussed. <laughs> it's <laughs> Still amazing. It, it, yeah, it's great. Uh, Brandon and I are releasing episode 203 of the Bullet Cast tomorrow. We're going to record that Christmas Eve. Give you guys a little holiday cheer. And then uh, next week, the last Bullet Cast of the year will be the Cassidy Awards. I can't wait. Uh, Baby Huey has already confirmed. He's RSVP to be on the call. It's gonna be a, it's gonna be a great show, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much. Stay clean. Stay strong. Stay safe. Uh, stay quarantined. Diamonds are forever. So is the microphone messiah. Love it. So looking forward to you. Your Bulls Cast Awards. You put a lot of work into that. A lot of great stuff. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Looking forward to be a part of that this year. And uh, 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 yeah, I'm Baby Huey. Follow me on Facebook at Baby Huey Official. Twitter and Instagram at Baby Huey 83. In the click on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube. Please follow there for all the latest updates. Please subscribe. Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts. Thank you for all the support. Please remember, review, leave a comment on Apple Podcasts. Uh, give us five stars there. Uh, in the click at gmail.com. If you have any questions, comments, feedback, anything, uh, I think we'll uh, start doing like a mailbag segment in the new year. Um, I'm trying to think, yeah, other updates are coming. So make sure you just follow us there. Please subscribe to us on YouTube. And uh, 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 we're going to have some fun episodes next week as well. I'm looking forward to it. And uh, yeah. On that note, let's go home, and that's the bottom line, because Huey said so.